Love it or loathe it, there's no denying that Five Nights at Freddy's or FNAF is a global sensation. But how did this indie game about animatronic animals get so many sequels, books, fan theories, and even a movie? This is the history of Five Nights at Freddy's. In 2013, indie developer Scott Cawthon released a mobile game called Chipper and Sons Lumber Company, where players would control a small beaver named Tyke as he sets out into beaver forest to do favors for other animals and gathers lumber for his dad, Chipper. Despite its cutesy appearance, it had a sort of horrifying look about it. Notable critics, such as Jim Stephanie Sterling, called the characters' faces ghastly and mentioned that they had a creepy animatronic vibe to them. What in the name of Jesus Saint McF***? Initially deterred, even going so far as to remove Chipper from Steam's Greenlight page, Cawthon decided to turn his lemons into lemonade and make something much scarier. <laughs> Cawthon originally set up a Kickstarter to help fund the game, but ended up cancelling it. After around six months of working on the game alone, in early June 2014, he released a trailer for his new title, Five Nights at Freddy's. The premise of the game was simple. Players would act as the nighttime security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, watching over the joint's famed and beloved animatronics via security camera each night. You're alone, save for the animatronics and calls from Phone Guy, an ex-employee who leaves you messages at the start of each shift to tell you how to play the game and to reveal some lore. Sounds simple enough, but the animatronics, including Freddy Fazbear, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, have become erratic, unpredictable, and even dangerous. If they find a human, they'll kill them by stuffing them into a costume. They need to be watched at night because in 1987, one of them bit somebody, resulting in a serious injury. Players follow them via security cameras and can use their limited amount of electricity to hit the lights, as well as lock the security doors. Gawthon revealed in an interview that he deliberately wanted the game to be mechanically simple so that anyone could play it without needing to be able to understand English to get to grips with the tutorial. Dotted throughout the game were references to much darker dealings and events that happened at the restaurant over the years, like a man who killed children at the establishment. Five Nights at Freddy's was greenlit on Steam in August 2014 and eventually released there and via Desura for $5. It came to Android and iOS a couple of months later. Its short length and cheap price were attractive enough, but it was also perfect YouTube Let's Play fodder and that helped the game blow up. It was simple to understand, tense for both the viewer and the player, and generated huge over-the-top reactions. Hey, God, this night is lasting forever! YouTubers like Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, and PewDiePie played it and got millions of views, helping the game go viral. YouTube even revealed that Five Nights at Freddy's was the eighth most watched game on the platform. It even reviewed relatively well. We gave it an 8 out of 10, and it wasn't long before a sequel was teased. When I say it wasn't long, I wasn't kidding. The sequel was teased on Cawthon's website less than a month later, and it was set to release in 2015. Weirdly though, it was actually released much earlier, hitting Steam on November 10th, 2014. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 took place at a different restaurant in 1987 and featured both the old and new models of the animatronics from the first game, as well as some new additions like the terrifying Balloon Boy and the Puppet. The core gameplay was much the same. Players would sit in the security office and man the cameras, watching for the animatronics as they snuck around the Fazbear Pizza joint, but Cawthon added a few changes. You couldn't lock the doors like in the first game, and you could now repel some of the animatronics using a mask or other specific items like a music box or a torch. But the biggest change came with the game's fail state. 
Sometimes, instead of seeing a game over screen, players would be greeted with a strange minigame known as the Death Minigames. In these, you'd be controlling one of the animatronics as they give children cake or gifts. Occasionally, a creepy purple man can be seen killing children, and it's with these death mini games where the fandom started to dig deep into the game's lore to learn more about the horrors that may have happened at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza over the years and who was behind them. Towards the end of the game, it's implied that the person who was bitten in 1987 was you, and the place was shut down for a while after, with another security guard, Fritz Smith, taking over before being fired after one day. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 received criticism for being much harder than its predecessor was, but was still immensely popular. By seeding lore and a general feeling of unsettledness, its fan base was growing and eager for the next installment. And again, it really wasn't long before it came out. Striking while the iron was hot, Cawthon's website went offline in December 2014. Viewers were shown a creepy image of an animatronic with the tagline, I am still here in January 2015, with the trailer and Steam Greenlight page dropping at the end of the month. Cawthon trolled fans by announcing that the game was cancelled after a hacker had stolen it, then linking to a modified version of a game he'd previously made called There Is No Pause Button. Set 30 years after Freddy Fazbear's Pizza closed, FNAF 3 takes place in a horror attraction that depicts the urban legends of the haunted pizza parlor, complete with props scavenged from the restaurants, including an animatronic named Springtrap. Your tools were fragile this time, so security cameras, vent control, and speakers would break meaning that you need to keep rebooting the systems to keep Springtrap at bay. Springtrap is the only animatronic in the game. While Freddy and the gang also appear, they're phantom versions of themselves, providing jump scares aplenty, but they don't kill you. Instead, they just up the ante as Springtrap gets closer. Death minigames return and actually hint at other minigames that you can access from inside your office. There are multiple endings, depending on how many of the minigames you completed. In April 2015, it was revealed that Warner Brothers had snapped up the rights to make a Five Nights at Freddy's movie, and a few big names were attached, including Roy Lee, who had previously produced The Departed and The Lego Movie, as well as Cat Smith Productions, which went on to produce the adaptation of Stephen King's It. The movie was hit with a number of delays before finally landing at Bloomhouse Productions. At one point, Home Alone director Chris Columbus was attached to direct, but his involvement ended as of September 2021. The script is still being worked on, last time we heard from the project. This can't be very interesting, like, playthrough. Sorry, guys, because we have to hear. How do you? Okay, I heard thump, 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 thump. Five Nights at Freddy's 4, meanwhile, takes place in 1984, and in a radical switch up for the franchise, doesn't have you monitoring security cameras in any way. It takes place inside a child's bedroom, and we learn through mini games that the child has an intense fear of Fazbear's Pizza Restaurant. Honestly, who can blame them? Unsurprisingly, the game has animatronics trying to kill you, and the only way to fend them off is by shining a flashlight on them before slamming a door in their face. FNAF 4 got middling reviews, and it was billed as the final chapter of the Five Nights at Freddy's original story. Naturally then, it was widely assumed to be the last game in the franchise. Psych! Five Nights at Freddy's sister location was revealed in 2016, but its release wasn't exactly straightforward. At one point, some of the game's voice cast had leaked, and Cawthon's website claimed that it had been cancelled due to those leaks. However, it turned out that this was a post relating to the events of the game's story. Cawthon also took to the game's Steam forums to reveal that it had been delayed, citing that the game was too dark and that he was unsure how it will affect people. The whole thing turned out to be a stunt, again, and the game launched on October 7th. fair to Scott, the plot was pretty messed up. It features animatronics purposefully made to be child kidnapping machines, which at one point kind of backfired and killed their creator's daughter. 
These machines then merge their skeletons together to make a kind of Megazord animatronic and escape by hiding in the skin of your character. The game tries to balance out its grim story with an AI character named Handy who provides a bit of levity, but some reviewers found this pretty jarring. The next mainline entry was decidedly much more light-hearted. Well, for a while at least. Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator is free and is exactly what it sounds like, a business simulator. You design pizzas and serve them to happy kids, eventually making business decisions to expand and keep your joint ahead of the game, all while attempting to stop any rogue animatronics from doing what they do best in this franchise. With Cawthon evolving the FNAF formula in multiple ways, it was only a matter of time before the series came to VR to ensure maximum jump scares. Okay, so that's the, okay, so how do, can, can I, can they f off? Can they leave? Stop! Yes, they'll leave. Just... Take the cup, take take your bu bullshit garbage, have a great old dandy night. Oh, Mingya. Okay, f you. Oh, no, 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 something's still there. Ah, uh, can I uh, stop? Just go home. Oh, I'm making a bad time. Help Wanted, developed by Steel Wool Studios, is a mix of modes inspired by the other games, meaning you're not just staring at the security monitors, but in VR. Admittedly though, there is some of that, but other modes offered more variety, like fixing animatronics or listening out for animatronics in the dark and shining a torch to keep them away. Help Wanted was well received by fans and critics alike, with many praising the variety of minigames and the effectiveness of VR to make it scarier. Which brings us to Security Breach, the latest mainstream FNAF game. Once again developed by Steel Wool Games, it's a direct sequel to Help Wanted. A young boy is locked in a Freddy Fazbear shopping mall overnight, and you guessed it, the place is packed with deadly animatronics who are out to get him. The game was originally due to be released in 2020, but was delayed due to the pandemic. To make up for the delay, Cawthon released a free beat-em-up game called Security Breach Fury's Rage. In June 2021, Cawthon retired from public-facing video game development, claiming that he missed making games for fun and for his kids. He had been embroiled in a political controversy, donating over $40,000 to Republican politicians, leading to criticism from his fanbase, in particular the LGBTQ community, who were directly impacted by his actions. Cawthon took to Reddit to say he would not apologize for the donations and that he was simply trying to back the people who would make a difference. So there you have it, the history of the mainline Five Nights at Freddy's games. For more deep dives into your favorite franchises, make sure to like this video and subscribe to GameSpot. Thanks for watching.